How are we doing, everybody? Welcome back. Drew Kugler here today with your April Champions Club Unpacking with the Pros video. And let me tell you, this box is loaded down. If you're not a subscriber already, head on over to mlfchampionsclub.com, $29.99 a month. I'm going to be sending you killer boxes each month, just like this one, full of nothing but premium baits, same stuff the pros are using on the Pro Circuit and on the Bass Pro Tour. So let's go ahead and hop on in to April. Um, before we get to the baits, let's talk about the three different discounts we're going to have in this month's box. Starting out, Ducket is going to be doing half off on all of their BD Swim series swim baits. Um, here I've got the five inch Tennessee Shad, killer bait, especially for summertime. So go ahead and stock up before we get to those warm summer months over at ducketfishing.com. Um, moving on from that, we've got a discount from Favorite Fishing. So their discount is for everything on their website. So if you need rods, reels, apparel, anything and everything, head on over to their website and get whatever you need. So last but not least, um, this is a new one. This is a pretty cool product that we've got 15% off on for the month of April. And it is going to be Precision Sonar's Graph Glass. I don't know if you all can see that, but if you're not aware of what Graph Glass is, it's essentially a screen protector, just like you would have on your phone, um, but for your graphs. I mean, graphs are a big investment and you need to protect them in any way that you can. So with Graph Glass, it's going to make that graph shatter resistant. Um, it's still touch friendly. So like this one here that I have is for a Solix, but it won't affect the touch screen abilities in any way. Um, waterproof, explosion proof, HD clarity, and these things are sweet. If you're not running them on your graphs, on your boat already, you need to be. Um, they're gonna send you the glass itself, as well as, well, I can't really get it out too much, um, as well as all of the different installation tools that you need. So everything you need right here in one pack I'm serious. These things are awesome. Go check them out at precisionsonar.com and get them fast because I know that they are flying out the door. So those are your three April discounts. So let's go ahead and hop into the seven different April baits that we have. So it's a pretty stout lineup and I'm not going to talk much this month. I'm going to let the pros do the talking. But before we hop in, I am going to talk real quick about the Mustad Tungsten Titan X nail weights that we're sending. We've got two different um, Cinco's finesse worms that are coming out in this month's box that you're going to be hearing about here in just a little bit. And so what better tool to use with those baits than a little tungsten nail weight and this guy is small but mighty. It is tungsten, so it's a pretty compact little weight. And all you do is just push it right there into the end of whichever worm you choose. Um, this one is a Yamamoto Senko that all of you are going to be getting. So with that little weight there, the head just has a little bit more weight to it than the tail. So perfect for if you're wanting to do a Nico rig, or if you just need to add a little bit more weight to your wacky rig to speed up that fall rate. So without further ado, um, now that I've shown you guys the Cinco, we're going to have Bass Pro Tour Pro Randy Howe hop on board with us. Um, Randy is known to be a Cinco fisherman. I think he's going to talk with us a little bit today about that big fish that he caught on Bussy Break on a Cinco, um, not on a wacky rig, but Nevertheless, it was on a Yamamoto Senko. So, Randy, how's it going, man? It is growing great. How are you guys doing today? We're doing good. It's a rainy day, but we got yeah. fish in our mouths still. So. Best day to get in the garage and do a little shop talk, tell you That's guys right. how, to, how I love to fish that Senko. So, we're, it's a good day to do it while it's raining. That's right. So, let's get into talking about this thing. Um, all of our subscribers are going to be getting the staple Yamamoto Senko, the five inch Senko. Uh, we've yeah. got a couple different colors coming out. I'm not sure what color that you had there with you, but I've got the green pumpkin with the green and purple flake. It's yeah, one of my favorites personally. 
Same thing. I got that here too. Green pumpkin purple, green pumpkin copper. Anything green pumpkin, you can't go wrong. You catch a fish anywhere in the country. Perfect, man. So tell us a little bit about it. How do you like to rig it this time of year? Um, you know, where yeah. are you fishing that, that bait at? <clears throat> well, first of all, the Cinco is the, I mean, I'm telling you, everybody needs to know that Cinco is the most copied piece of plastic on the market today. There's, but the last I counted, it was over 47 copies of the Cinco. And because it's such a simple copy, it's not much detail in the actual look of the bait but what's inside the bait and how it's made up of the plastic and the mixture. I've been to the Yamamoto plant in Arizona uh, and I've watched how they make the Cinco and all the plastics there and it's about five different powders and compounds that are poured into this huge mixing barrel, not just salt but several other things that I don't know what they are but they make up the texture and the softness so that bait wiggles like that and that's the key. That's why there's no substitute for the original Yamamoto Cinco. So the five inch Cinco, I've caught more bass on this bait than probably any plastic in my life. And my favorite way to use it is wacky style. And wacky style, and the reason for that is wacky style is when the hook is hooked right in the middle of the bait and it just keeps the bait in that uh, defensive position as it's going through the water like this. So the, the wiggle of that Yamamoto, it just keeps that bait almost looks like a little butterfly or a little bird trying to flap is what I call it when it's in the water. But it, as it falls, the Cinco has a wiggle on the tail and the head of it as it's falling. And that the fall rate and the, how the weight, the, how heavy the bait is without any weight on it is what makes that bait have its unique action. So then when you, you just kind of bounce the slack line, let it fall out of sight, bounce the slack line, let it fall. A lot of times on the fall, is where you'll pick up and you'll be sw they'll be swimming off. They always get it on the fall. Typically, when it's mo when it's moving, it's it's attracting them, and then as it's falling, is when they come eat it. So always watch your line, feel your line. I use it on straight braid a lot, and that's unusual. A lot of guys have always have a leader or have fluorocarbon, but I like to use it on uh, either 15 or 20 pound dial or J braid grand green line, and I'll skip it under docks, under brush, around cover. Anywhere you can get it that's not too terribly, uh, not too terribly thick. You know, if it's thick, I'll use a weedless type wacky hook. But the regular open style hook that I use is a Pro X. It's a Pro X hook I designed, and I use a size one or a size one off. But that straight shank style wacky hook, and then it's just a really good bait to skip. You can put a little O ring on it, and that'll kind of save your bait. I use it without one, but also sometimes use it with one. You can get a few more fish out of one bait with an O ring sliding on there uh, to, to hook the hook through. So that's my favorite favorite as a whole, and it'll catch fish year round, anywhere you go, especially tough conditions, high bluebird skies, bright days, clear water. That's where the Yamamoto Cinco wacky style excels. Awesome, man. Well, I know um, you were kind of, well, obviously you caught that huge, what was it, a 12 pounder? 12, 14, uh, almost break? 13 pounds, almost 13 pounds. Wow, man. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I know you weren't throwing it on a wacky rig. You had that Cinco Texas rig, but that just kind of right. goes to show the versat versatility of this bait. Um, yeah. It sure does. Yeah, that, that was a, a pretty awesome day. Two days in a row, I caught my biggest bass of my life on the first day there at Caney Lake, and then the very next day, uh, I went for, but but the way fishing goes, and it shows you that even guys that do it for a living like me, I fished for five, five and a half hours on Bussy Break without a bite, and then all of a sudden, I, I, I got in the right, a right area, I guess, that was a little better, and I was flipping more creature-style baits. I was flipping a flapping hog, and I decided, well, high bluebird sky, cold water, Florida stream bass, I ought to be flipping a Cinco. So I pulled out a, a black-blue laminate, or it's called a blue-black laminate, which is a black-blue laminate blended color, just a good dirty water color. The reason I didn't use green pumpkin because the water was kind of muddy there, and those dark Cinco's do better in dirty water. Had it on a, on a little red Bass Pro quarter ounce tungsten bullet weight, and I like that red because it flashes like a little blood flash in, in muddy water. And I was just flipping three and four foot deep, little shallow brush and bushes. And I caught a three and a half pounder right away. Got on score tracker, was in like seventh place. And then flip in that bush and pick up and it's pulling down. I set the hook and I set the hook one arm 
not really thinking it was going to be a 13 pounder. If I'd have known it was going to be that big, I would have went two handed and, and jerked. But you never, when you're not getting any bites, that's what happens. But it all worked out. Grabbed that sucker, pulled it in the boat, and man, it's the biggest fish of my life and the major league fishing record of all time now. And I'm hoping it's a record that'll stay for a long time and be one of the only ones that Jacob Wheeler don't have. So that'll be yes. good. <laughs> You'd like to see nothing but spotted bass lakes, the rest of the bass pro field, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I was uh, I was relieved when we got past Lake Fork because we went Lake Fork right after that. You know, Bradley Bradley Roy called an eleven eleven, and that would have blown my ten third my ten twelve. Uh, let's see, mine was a ten eleven. He called eleven eleven, so he he would have broke my ten eleven record. So thankfully, that twelve fourteen held after Fork, and I think it's safe the rest of the year this year, and uh, hopefully. A lot of years to come because i know on bassmaster all the years we fished bassmaster 12 pounds was the biggest bass ever caught on on the bassmaster history too for a while and it was a low or mid 12 i think so that fish is just kind of a, a godsend fish of a lifetime and i was thankful that i was able to catch it on camera on mlf live on the boat and uh, I'll, I'll have a video to prove it really happened <laughs> awesome well before we wrap things up um I know you were going to tell us a little bit about how you rub some of the salt out of this bait to give it kind of a different look. Let's go over that real quick um, before we yeah, head out. This, this, is a little, this is a little pro pointer. We usually don't tell this a whole lot because a lot of times my competitors, I don't know if they all know this or not, but I hope they don't because I just I think it gets me a little bit more bite, especially in pressured areas. But any of the green pumpkin Cinco's or even the black and blue, I do it with any, just about any of them. You rub that. You just squeeze it with your finger and your thumb and you just pull it like that, pull it down. And as you rub that thing, you can do it in sections or the whole bait. If you just want your tail to light up, almost like putting chartreuse on the tail, you just rub and squeeze that tail and rub it together. And that salt and that mixture, it's not just the salt, it's the other additives in the bait that comes out and it kind of changes that bait. It takes that shiny uh, production plastic look away and it makes it have that swampy real life look like it's a real living creature in the water and i've done that for a lot a lot of years came across that just by catching fish and the fish tearing the bait up and seeing the bait in the water and it looked better when the fish's teeth had scraped it up and then that's how we figured out hey we ought to rub that and see and it does the same effect so just remember that if you're using any of the cinco especially green pumpkin family you can't go wrong doing that. You'll get more bites. You'll change your color and you'll have better success with it. Awesome, Randy. Well, well, folks, you've heard it from Randy. Um, I think, I mean, everybody's going to be getting a pack of Cinco's in their box. And I'd say after watching this video, quite a few of them are going to be rubbing some of that salt out of them, and getting that, that good natural. Yeah, so, they better, they better on here with us, Randy. Hey, glad you guys got me on here, and glad all you guys on the Champion Club appreciate you guys for following us in Major League Fishing, and uh, can't beat all the great baits you're going to be getting in these boxes every every uh, every month, and that's what it's all about, getting all the pros on the Major League Fishing Tour to chip in and kind of put the right baits and give you these tips to help you guys catch more fish. So hope you'll see you guys out on the water with some big bass in your hand. Awesome, Randy. Well, thanks so much, man, and uh, good luck. All right, thank you. Good luck to you guys. Okay, guys. Great hearing from Randy about a real classic bait to the world of bass fishing. I mean, the Yamamoto Cinco has been around for quite a while now, had tons of big stringers of bass caught on it. Um, really not enough good things to say about it. So we are going to transition from that to a company that's a little bit newer to the industry, as well as an angler who is kind of newer to the pro circuit level. So from Lamp, Missouri, we've got Eric Oliverson hopping on the call with us today to talk to us about the three different Six Sense products that are going to be in the April box. So Eric, man, tell me what's going on. Hey, doing good, man. It's a rainy day in Missouri. How are you, Drew? It is. I think it's just as rainy here in Kentucky, but we're doing all right. So good deal. it's a good day to talk about tackle. That's right. That's right. Yeah, man. Um, Six cents really showed out this month. We've got three great products for them or from them. Um, one rigging method, a worm, and a crankbait. So I guess let's start out by talking about this Ned Fry. Um, all of our subscribers are going to be getting it in the black and blue flake. So I know this has the Ned in the name, but man, this worm, it seems like you can do just about anything with it. 
It does. You know, it's a it's a very versatile finesse bait. And, you know, although it says Ned, and yes, I use it as a Ned, Ned type of bait, um, I love the little segments. It's a segmented body bait. So you can literally, you know, you know, cut it down to whatever size your fish, like if you're, you know, fishing up north, they want a smaller bait for smaller spotted bass, a little bit smaller bait. But I love the fact that it's a four and a half inch bait because, you know, the fish don't really see that Ned style bait in that big of a bait. So really one of the best ways to, to rig it is on a shaky head. Um, you can Carolina rig it. It kind of rem reminds me of like a, like a fish doctor or like a, uh, uh, something like that. You know what I mean? Where you can Carolina rig it. You can, um, you know, rig it on a, uh, what am I trying to say? A split shot rig. And one really thing, one really cool thing that I found <clears throat> is being able to, um, use it on the like ledges, man. That's been kind of a sleeper bait that a lot of people haven't really really done or really talked about but you know after you go through your gauntlet of bigger baits on these um, on these ledges everybody knows these fish are getting a little more tricky to catch out there so um, a little bit bigger bait rigged on a you know a uh, a net head that's got more weight you know even a three eighths ounce size you can fish that bait in 20 30 foot of water but one of the best ways especially now the month of april um, we're getting around the spawning season. You've got a lot of cruising fish, a lot of spawners. And one of the best ways, my favorite ways really, is to rig it on a wacky hook. And Six Sense makes a great wacky hook. And that is a great way. You, I just toss it around on a spinning reel with six or eight pound test. You can cover water if you've got, you know, water in the bushes. If you've got bedding fish, spawning fish, fry garters, that is a killer, killer bait. And to wig it wacky style on their wacky hook is is really awesome. And Six Sense makes a great wacky hook. And speaking of that hook, that's another one of the Six Sense products that our subscribers are going to be getting. So nice. we've got the size number one wacky. Um, it's a five pack, and I actually took one out of this pack and went ahead and threw it into that Ned Fry with a little um, nail weight in the nose of it. You know, it's absolutely a killer, killer finesse presentation, like you were saying. Once it is. Fish are getting up shallow. and. Yep. Now, one thing the subscribers should need to know about that wacky hook, there's certain styles or bends of different wacky hooks. That's an octopus style hook. So what that means is it's not a hook that you want to rear back and set the hook really hard. So that hook is designed to pull in to the fish. So you don't really want to set the hook, you know, as soon as they bite it, you really just want to reel your slack up and kind of pull with the rod. And man, they do not come off with that style of hook set. So very important, but it's an awesome hook. Once it gets them, they've got their pinned. It is. Yeah. It's, it seems like it's sharp and it's, it's a good hook. I can't say it a bad is. thing about it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> so. it's the real deal for sure. Let's totally transition from finesse to power fishing here um with the third and final six cents product we've got for this month um which is the crush 100x square bill and i've got the 4k shad here and man i'm really impressed by this color pattern it's it's gold on the top but it's got a little bit of everything in it really yeah no it's that that color that 4k shad is probably my one of my favorite standard colors for any you know, of the six cents bait lineup. Um, but yeah, when they, they talk about, you know, a square bill crankbait, power fishing technique, that it's like a 2.5, you know, crankbait. So it's a little bit bigger than, you know, your smaller 1.5. So it weighs five eighths of an ounce, almost three inches long. You can bomb it. Excellent bait to fish around grass and, and everything. And we already touched on the colors of the baits, man. They hit a home run every time whether it's a bluegill color, shad pattern, whatever. Um, but one thing that I can really appreciate about all the Six Sense crankbaits is, is all the hardware they put on it. Their, their split rings are, are awesome. The hooks are super sharp. You never have to worry about, you know, replacing those hooks right out of the package. So, um, but those extra wide gap short shank hooks are the deal. That's exactly what I was getting ready to say is most all shallow running crankbaits that I buy myself. Right. The first thing that I do to them before I even tune them 
is I'm going to take them out of the box and I'm going to put an EWG style treble on it. Um, yeah. So that's really sweet that this bait's coming straight out of the package with those. I mean, all you yeah. got to do is tie it on and fish. Yep. Yep. I mean, right out of the package, those things are game day ready. So yeah, your awesome. subscribers enjoy all those, all those three things. So whether your fish are a little bit finicky and you need to get after them with a finesse application or you can just power fish your way through the day. I mean, six cents got you covered this month. I, I absolutely do. Yep. Eric, well, thanks so much. And um, good luck at it's Pickwick this month. Pickwick. Right? Pickwick, Pickwick looking man. for some redemption. Awesome. Well, good luck <laughs> to you this month, man. And um, thanks for hopping on the call with us. Appreciate you, Drew. All right. Well, now that we've heard from Eric about the different six cents baits, let's head over to the guy that when I think of the Strike King Thunder Cricket, this is the pro that I think of. So on the other line, we've got Andy Montgomery, who is going to talk to us about the Strike King Thunder Cricket. Andy, how's it going? We're good. We're good. Sitting in the truck. But other than that, we're good. That's all right. Well, I'm happy to have you on here today to talk to us about this Strike King Thunder Cricket, man. Yeah, man, the Thunder Cricket uh, was kind of born in the first Major League Fishing competition ever. It wasn't even ready to be released, but um, I caught the nine-pounder with a few seconds to go. And when you dig a bait out of a nine-pounder's throat, um, you know, it, it can kind of speed up the release of a bait. Yeah, that'll draw some attention to the bait for sure. But We're excited yeah. to have it in the box this month. Um, I think it's going to be a great value adder to this box. I mean, it's... Talk about a premium bait. Um, yeah. yeah. One of so it, it is a premium. It is a premium design bait uh, as far as the hook. Uh, it's got the owner jungle hook in it. Um, so not not many corners, if any corners, was cut on this. There wasn't no corners. Um, it's it's just a premium bait that, that flat catches them pretty much year round. Awesome, man. Yeah, I've got the uh, olive shad color here, which is what quite a few of our subscribers are going to be getting. And that's a sweet paint job. I love the painted blade on that thing. And another thing that I've noticed on this bait is that recessed head design with the swiveling pivot there to the blade. Um, can you tell yeah. us about that? Yeah, so um, that's one of the unintended good consequences of a, of a uh, bait design. So, uh, um, you know, we didn't design it for this reason, but what it actually ended up doing was the biggest inherent problem with bladed jigs was you, you missed a lot of fish. Just the blade got in the way of the fish, um, you know, when you set the hook. So you got to get the hook point away from the blade because if the fish eats it, he collapses the blade, number one. But what that pivot head actually does is it gets the blade even further away from the hook. So, um, you know, it actually rides kind of up. When, it, when you're fishing it just like any bladed jig would but when you jerk it actually helps get the blade away from the hook point which means you're gonna hook many hook more fish and, and i tell people you're not gonna get more bites on a thunder cricket versus any other bladed jig on the market you're just not and and if anybody says you know hey they bite this one better than nothing it's not the bite part but we're in the catching business and I do feel like you catch more just because of the blade design and getting that blade away from that hook point um, is a big deal because we're not in the business of getting bites. We're in the business of catching them. And, sure. you know, number one, get the bite and number two, get the hook in him. And that's what that pivot head does uh, is get that blade out of the way. Awesome. man. and talking about that hook, um, it's got the wire bait keeper on the hook as well as kind of a bait keeper molded there into the lead so tell me yeah two or three different trailers that you like to throw on this bait um we're not sending out a specific trailer in this month's box with the bait so it's kind of right. left to the angler to decide what they put on the back of it yeah and and um so trailer is very important you can you can change your your entire presentation by your trailer uh, how much it lifts, how much it dies, how weedless it is, snagless it is. Um, so my three top ones is a Strike King Blade Minnow, um, which is just a you know a boot tail, not a boot tail, but a fork tail uh, bait that that's going to allow the bait to get a little deeper. It's not going to have as much lift. Got plenty of action. Um, number two would be the Strike King Swimming Shiner, which is a boot tail 
type action. It's gonna have a lot of action, but it's gonna your bait's gonna ride a little higher. Um, I use any both of them anytime I'm fishing open water situations. Depending on if I want the bait to get deeper or higher, you know, I use the swimming shiner for it to rise, uh, the blade minnow for it to get a little deeper. Um, but I love using the Strike King Rage Bug. It's a flatter bait, and that's really helps you when you're fishing cover because uh, it's going to prevent the bait from rolling over and rolling over is what snags your bait when it rolls over and gets hooked on a you know a limb or whatever you're bringing it over so um i base a lot of it on, on how high i want it to ride in the water column and number two which is very very important if i'm fishing cover i'm going to use uh you know the the rage bug it's, it's just going to really cut down on how many times you get snagged and you mentioned the wire keeper and the um the little ribs on the on the the lead that's old saltwater trick um on jig heads and and i actually fought against that i wanted the screw lock keeper on it um i had no idea how, how good them ribs would actually hold a bait on you know on a on a bait you know uh you can put a lot of abuse on them if you're skipping or, or whatever um and I was pleasantly surprised because I fought against that. I wanted to screw lock. I lost that battle, but I was very, very pleasantly surprised. I, I haven't saltwater fished much, and, and them ribs really hold a bait. You know, they get it up there and hold it tight. Awesome, man. And along with that olive shad, we're also sending out the bruiser color as well as falcon lake crawl. So that's going to yeah. be somewhere where I think that that rage bug or even a rage crawl is going to come into play a little bit more than your swimming shiners. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. Um, that's more of the early pre-spawn type colors. Black, the, the bruiser, which is kind of a green pumpkin, black and blue mix, um, is a year round. The Texas crawl is really a pre-spawn killer. Um, the olive shad that you had is actually a new color um, that, you know, I like to put bigger trailers on it because what that really imitates is a gizzard shad. And, and we know big fish love gizzard shads and that's that's a color perfect for imitating gizzard shad but you need to use a bigger trailer when you use that one just because most of our gizzard shad are going to be bigger so um three really good colors i don't know who did the color selection but they did a good job yeah we work together with the guys over at strike king i think that they know what they're doing a little bit on those baits <laughs> they know which ones go out off the shelf quick <laughs> that's right well andy thanks so much for hopping on here with us man um I appreciate your input on this and your advice for me as well as all of the subscribers. So, yeah, yeah, appreciate it. Anytime we can talk about a thunder cricket, um, you know, I, I really like the thunder cricket. So, anytime we get a chance to talk about it is a is a good time. Awesome, Andy. Well, thanks so much again, and uh, we will we'll see you later. Sounds good. Great for hearing from Andy about the striking thunder cricket. Now, last but not least. Let's head over to Tennessee Pro Jason Lambert, who's going to talk to us about the Yozuri product in the box. So, Jason, how's it going, dude? It's good, man. Spring of the year, down here hanging out on the Tennessee River, doing a little sauger fishing, a little turkey hunting between tournaments. So, we uh, we got a little break. Don't usually get get a month off like this or five weeks, but it's kind of nice right now. Well, good. I'm glad you're enjoying your break. Um, happy to have you hopping on here to talk to us today about this Yozuri prop bait man it's a pretty, yeah. pretty good looking little bait it is a cool bait and that's a cool florida color right there you know uh, one thing about prop baits you always hear about you know the traditional prop baits down in florida and the top water fishing down there and it is i mean any of the any of the southern states where you got a lot of vegetation the prop bait comes in handy but you know the one thing that that thing gets overlooked for is you know what even up here on our lakes you know pickwick lake kentucky lake has always been well known in the fall for for big you know top water fisheries and and that thing you know the prop the 3d prop is it's it's not your traditional stick bait obviously it's got the you know we got the plastic prop on the back and a lot of guys you know even out in the ozarks have thrown you know like the plopper style baits for for years and and basically this thing is just it's it's that on a you know a, i guess a more you know beat down level so it's not quite as aggressive so don't overlook that thing you know in the Ozarks or on the you know Tennessee River up and down all all across, but absolutely in Florida that's some that this bait is something that's going to be a big player. Definitely, man. Yeah, and that's 
kind of the same way that I'm thinking about it is like a finesse application for a place that you would want to throw a plopper or something of that style. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to say a finesse top water, but yeah. I get exactly what you're saying. It's, it's a toned down version of, of, of something like the plopper and, you know, Watson and those guys, they made that thing famous out there on the Ozarks and, and any of the lakes where you have, you know, gizzard shad, you know, bigger, bigger bait, bigger bait fish that, that get eaten. And that's the same thing in Florida with the big brim. I mean, a lot of those fish down there eat nothing but brim and tilapia. So, you know, the gizzard shad is kind of the same, same kind of thing. It's a big, big bait fish that, that all of our fish feed on. So it, it is a, you know, a more of a, a finesse, you know, I guess less intrusive uh, form of a big top water. I mean, up and down the Tennessee River, we throw, you know, the big pop, you know, the like the big pencil baits and stuff like that. And, and you know, this is a bait that, that would serve the same purpose, but not be quite as aggressive. So I, I'm looking forward to getting getting it this fall. I haven't got to fish it in the fall of the year yet since it's a new new product for us. So this fall up and down, you know, especially on Pickwick Lake around those high drill edges, I'm, I'm looking forward to throwing that thing. Definitely. And now... Would you ever take this thing kind of more in the springtime and throw it once those fish get up there shallow around the bushes and things like that? Or absolutely. I mean, though, you know, a lot of guys throw top water a lot when the fish are coming up to spawn, and you know, basically when those fish are up there spawning, they're they're not up there to eat. They're up there to protect their bed and and protect their eggs. And and any any time that you would any time of the year, any part of the, any, part of the country that you would throw a top water absolutely it's it's a bait that's going to be a player you know it's anytime you would throw a, a buzz bait for example i mean that bait that bait would come into play so th there's going to be a lot more applications for this 3d pop prop than just you know florida fishing i mean i, I know everybody gets hung up on on prop baits fishing them in florida but you know this this is something that that can be thrown anywhere around the country any time of the year whenever you're whenever you would target a top water bite like i said whether it be a buzz bait whether it be a, a stick bait you know walking bait and a fall around school and fish i mean absolutely it's something you can throw more than just any any one time of the year awesome man yeah it seems like a super versatile bait um got really good paint jobs on them i've got the bluegill one here of course um and in my mind i'm thinking maybe once those bluegill get up there on the beds even throwing this thing around that time of year as well so it seems like, you know, any warmer month, this thing's going to come into play. Any any time that you'll have any situation that you can throw a top water in, this bait can work for that. You hold that up there, and I actually don't have one with me, but when you held it up there, you see that real bottom. You know, mm -hmm. it's one thing that Yoziri's done with all of our top water baits. That real bottom just gives it a different presentation on the surface. It breaks up the surface a little differently than, than a standard, you know, round walking stick bait. But, you know, the, you're going to fish this bait just like you would fish, you know, um, any other prop bait. You know, it's not a walking bait. You're going to cast it out there and you're going to move it in strokes and, and let it see it. And, you know, 99% of your bites is going to come after it stops. I mean, they're not usually going to hit it moving. It's when it stops. But, you know, it, it's going to be a fun bait. Anytime you can catch them on any kind of top water, you get to see the bite. It's going to be a fun, a fun bait. But it's also something, I mean, it's, especially for the guys that fish – you know the, the the big walking baits that we do up and down the river in the fall of the year it's also something that could rest your arm for a while after throwing a big walking bait that just wears you out over over the course of the day because it's going to be a lot simpler to fish than than a big giant walking bait too cool man well thanks so much for hopping on here with us and telling us a little bit about it um we'll let you get back to turkey hunting and <laughs> sauger fishing right yeah, well, I think that's about over with in April, but it's uh, it's still it's still fun. It's uh, you know, everybody asks you when you're not fishing, what do you do? And it's either chasing birds in the spring or or fishing the rest of the year. So, looking forward to getting back on the trail, though. Cool, man. Well, thanks so much again, Jason, and good luck. All right, Drew. Thanks, man. Well, everybody, that's gonna do it for April. Um, if that box does not make you want to get out there on the water and go fishing, you're not a bass fisherman. I'm serious. This box was the perfect april box in my opinion um there's really not a bait in this box that i feel like is not going to work anywhere in the country for that matter so you heard it from the pros these are all great baits you're not going to find anything but the best in these boxes i'm serious there's no mystery there's no luck 
just good baits. I've said it time and time again, and I'm going to keep saying it. Um, I truly feel like this is the best box on the market. Well, I might be a little bit biased, but really guys, if you haven't signed up already, head on over to the website and get yourself signed up 29 bucks a month. We're going to send you at least 45, 50 bucks a tackle each month. And it's all going to be good stuff. I mean, what other box are you finding quality stuff like this in? I don't know of one. So head on over, get signed up if you haven't already. If you have signed up, I'll be seeing you guys here in probably just a couple days on the monthly webinar. If you're a member and you don't know about the webinars, we have them every month. It's a ton of fun. You'll get the opportunity to ask pros different questions, interact with them, hear some cool stories, and hopefully learn a few tips and tricks. So make sure to hop on the webinars. Um, we've got some April boxes that we need to finish up getting packed up. And next thing you know, it'll be May and I'll be telling you all about the next set of baits coming through. So thank you guys again. Have a good one. Happy fishing. And we will see you all in May.